Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome. For today's video, I'm going to cover some of the changes that have been made recently with some of my, I don't know how to group them as a whole, my, my bugs, my feeders, my isopods. Basically, we're just going to cover what has changed with those as well as a change that I made here in the living room that I'm absolutely loving as well as an insight to something to come. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I tried to film the process of the dubia bin itself, but by the time I finished, it was dark out, the lighting sucked. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make a big video covering everything because I had to do the isopod bins too. So yeah. Basically my dubia roaches got a new setup and my isopods got a new setup. And because of the dubia bin, things had to move around in here because the new bin's a little bigger than the old bin. So you'll see. So first I'm gonna show you what I did with the dubia roach bin. And then I'm gonna show you footage from the isopod bins. And then I'm gonna take you off the tripod and kind of show you the final products. So this is what the bins look like. Unfortunately, they're a little bigger than those bins. So what I have to do is take all of this off to remove that bottom shelf so that it fits. Either that or I have to like raise that shelf and then hopefully it will fit. But I don't know, we'll mess with it. I'm not looking forward to it, but we'll mess with it. So here's one bin and I'll go get the other bin and we'll get going. All right, so here's my supplies. I've got the two bins, both from Walmart. I've got a box cutter and a glue gun because I'm an adult now and I live on my own, so I need to own things like this. So I had to go and buy them because I don't have them already. And then this screen also from Walmart. So everything came from Walmart because that is all I have near me at the moment. So yeah, so there's my supplies. Basically what we're gonna be doing is cutting the bottom off of one bin, hot gluing screen to it, sticking it inside the other bin because then all of their poop will fall through the screen into the other bin, which can then easily be dumped. Voila. So let's get into it and see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, so now that you've seen all of that and kind of the process of it happening, 
now I can show you the like final products everything's in its place so let's go so I have here the new isopod bins these came from family dollar or dollar general one of those two so each bin was only a dollar and then if I turn it you'll see that there's now ventilation on the side this one's on the other side but it's got some screen and um, oh yeah so I burned myself that's fun when I was making the ventilation for these bins the uh, soldering iron slipped hit my wrist that was fun so the bins are still kind of a work in progress because one my old bins had a lot of babies in them so those old bins are currently sitting on a shelf in my bedroom so I'm gonna give it time for the babies to grow so I can move them to the new bins but also my orange isopods they invaded about 50% of my other bins so instead of just transferring everything to a new bin I had to pick out the proper isopods and then because there was babies I have to let them sit so I know that the babies are the right species or if they're orange babies so yeah a lot of my isopod bins got overtaken by those orange ones <sighs> but yeah so I may have to order some more isopods to kind of restock my colonies a little bit so that was rough but I'm glad the project is finally done everyone is finally separated these bins um fruit flies hopefully can't get in and out as easily um and the isopods hopefully well not hopefully they won't be able to get out of these because it has a locking lid where the other ones you guys saw in my isopod video um where i talked about all the isopods i have if you want to see that i will put the link in the description but those bins came from the dollar store and they're great they just have a flip top however some of the isopods figured out how to climb out so I'd find them in my apartment, I'd find them in the wrong bins. So it was time for a change. And with how much they're producing, those bins were a little small. So I went to these bigger bins. So I'm super excited about it. Um, and I can't wait to restock them and re-get my colonies going because they were doing really well before the invasion happened. <laughs> okay, so we talked about that. Now we're gonna move on to the changes with the Adubia roaches. So before I turn you around, why don't you think back to my apartment tour video. Hopefully you watched it before watching this video, but if not, that's okay. You know, in my living room next to the TV is my small reptile shelf that had my hognose and Kenyan Sambo on it. Think back to that shelf. On top was Tansy, my bearded dragon too, if that helps. So think back to that shelf, okay? This is what it looks like now. <laughs> This is what happened. This is the new Dubia bin. It is much taller and longer than the old Dubia bin, which meant to go on the bottom, like it used to be, the shelves had to raise up, which means I had to take all this off this, take it apart, re-put it back together. So I almost didn't do it today, but I knew it had to happen. So I just, I did it. I got it over with and I did it. And I really, really like it now. So, on the bottom is just my dubias now. It used to be my dubias and my beetles, but I don't, that's the only thing that fits down there now. So, that is down there, and being on the floor, it's going to make it so much easier to pull it in and out to get dubias for my animals. And then you go up. This didn't change. There's Tootsie, the water. Go up. There's Penelope. Now, up here, I have my super worm beetles and my mealworm beetles because, like I said, they don't fit down here with this bin anymore. And then up here I have my plants, um, this chart in the back that you guys actually haven't seen yet, but I just put important information on it. Like in this corner, it tells me when I need to change everyone's UVB bulbs. In this corner, it actually says who got fed and when, but you can't see it behind the plant. Um, I used it for my pet sitter to write down important information and my contact information. Um, so yeah, so Tansy was up there and you notice Tansy is down here now. And that's because Tansy, is getting an upgrade. So, my coworker and I were talking about isopods the other day and how I breed them, and he was quite intrigued. So he texted me asking if I would like to trade a 40 gallon breeder 
for some isopods. Now I would be absolutely insane to say no to that. A 40 gallon breeder is like one of the best enclosures just to have on hand because they're a good size for most things. Um, and Tansy's growing pretty fast now and she's gonna need an upgrade soon. So a 40 gallon breeder does not fit on that shelf. And I keep all, or try to keep all of my diurnal animals out here in the living room. A, it's the brightest part of the apartment and B, it's where I pretty much spend all of my time. So I have all of my diurnal animals out here and all my nocturnal animals in the bedroom. However, Crikey is also in the bedroom, which I feel really bad about. I want him out here, but I didn't really have anywhere to put him. Um, that was kind of what was gonna happen with Tansy when she upgraded, I didn't know where to put her. So I moved stuff around and decided the 40 gallon breeder with Tansy is gonna go right out here. Um, because I just, I cannot put her in the bedroom. She is too lively to go in the bedroom. So she's going to go there. And I'm still looking for a new enclosure for Crikey. So now I'm thinking if I can find some stacking enclosures, I can have Tansy and Crikey right here. And that would be perfect. So that's what I'm hoping for, but one step at a time. So you'll notice over here is kind of a mess because I move stuff around. So once I have the 40 gallon breeder here, then I kind of can figure out where the rest of the stuff is gonna go. But just because I can't really picture it because it's not here yet, um, I just shoved everything over there. But yeah, so that is the new setup. And now I'm gonna show you the Dubia bin and the outcome. So I'll pull it out here. So you'll see I've got some holes for ventilation up here with the mesh. And this is actually two bins. So I have the top bin here and it's inside of this other bin with a heat mat between the two. It's Cause you want heat to encourage breeding. And if I open it up, it does need to be cleaned. Like I said, I haven't cleaned my Dubu bin in like months because I'm scared of them. So now that it's all sifting, I can empty that bin. But yeah, this has their water cubes or gels and food on it, but it looks like they dumped it. Um, yeah, but basically this bin has a screen on it and then when they poop, it falls through the screen to the bottom bin, which then can be dumped in the garbage. Super exciting. So yeah, Let's see if we can find some dubious. Ugh, you're terrifying. Usually down the back ones. Ew! I hate dubia roaches. Things I do for my animals. But yeah, so there's the new dubia setup, and then just slides right back under there. Easy peasy. So yeah, I'm super excited about these changes. They are changes I've been waiting to make for so long now. I just wasn't motivated. But I finally did it. It's done. So I just wanted to give you guys those updates. Um, show you what changed, show you how excited I am about them. Um, yeah, so as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you for the next video.